Good morning. It's a beautiful day today. It's kind of warm. It's probably about 10 or 11 o'clock right here. And uh, it's warming up. It's going to be a hot one. The gnats are definitely out. If you see me swatting like that, I'm not crazy. I'm just, the gnats are bothering me. I was going to uh, share with you how, how I shoot at deer and hogs. I know that sounds crazy, but um, I'm convinced that a lot of people, when they miss a deer or hog, it's simply because they didn't pick a spot. And, and me, even me, like, you know, as you shoot a bow a lot, when you miss, you know what you did wrong. You know, after you after you, you know, learned how to shoot and got your form down, when you miss, you know what happened. And a lot of times I fail to pick a spot. In the past, I've gotten much, much better especially probably the last 10 years, probably the last 10 years, I have one technique I use for picking a spot on an animal, an aiming technique, or whatever you want to call it, that works for me. And, it, and it's, it's pretty simple. A lot of guys, you know, shooting close range with a traditional bow, you know, they're not really fast and, and uh, the deer will move. So I aim low to begin with. I don't aim to miss the deer, I just aim low. I shoot for a, the heart on a deer. That way if he don't squat, I'm gonna shoot him through the heart. And if he does squat, then I'm gonna get him about mid lung probably. So, and, and that's worked for me a lot. And not only is it, it's, it's good at picking a spot, but it, it's also, uh, when you shoot a deer in the lower third of the lungs, you get a lot of blood on the ground for trailing. If you shoot a deer above halfway the lungs, or probably even lower than that, he does a lot of bleeding on the inside and it uh, doesn't put that much blood on the ground. It takes a while to, to track one sometimes like that. So you want a low shot. And another thing, if you shoot him, shoot him high and uh, there's always a chance of getting one lung or shooting over the lungs and just so it's just bad. It's not good to shoot one high. But uh, low, if you shoot him too low, well, you're gonna miss him if you shoot that as hard or maybe just hit a little bit of the meat underneath there or, or fur and skin, you'll be all right. He just might be a little smarter next time. And so I, I, that's the whole reason I shoot low. For, for the blood trails, if I miss low, I, I'm, I'm all right. You know, I don't have the sick feeling of losing the animal because I know he's okay. And uh, it allows me a lot of error for going up. And a deer, a deer squats a lot of times at the shot because He's not trying to duck the arrow, he just, he's getting his feet under him to go. And uh, that's his reaction to, he's squatting, coiling them springs where he can get gone. A hog a lot of times will, will go forward or, or wheel away from the sound. If you shoot at a pig that's quartering away a lot, most of the time, by the time the arrow gets there, a lot of the time, you, his butt will be there and you'll shoot to the side of him. So uh, there you have it, that's my take on it. But let me show you some stuff here. I got my, I'm gonna shoot an arrow or two in a minute. I got my river cane arrow. This is my blunt that I shoot. And uh, you know, a stone point, as I've said in the other videos, they don't weigh anything. 50, 50 grains is a pretty heavy one. So I took the, uh, the hull off of 45 long coat and I cut all the weight off of it, meaning where the primer's at and all that extra weight on the end. And I basically just got a little brass ring here that I put around my arrow hit it with a hammer a few times, kind of bend it around, make it stay on there, and I've shot this joker 500 times, and it's still in good shape. And it, it, I don't know what it weighs, but I guarantee you it don't weigh a whole lot. It's probably fairly comparable to your, your flint head. So that's a tip for you guys. And this, uh, it, I ain't had one of these maids, you know, it hadn't been squirrel season, but I can't wait. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty hard hitter right here. And anyway, I'll be shooting this area in a little bit. I was going to show you, I have a target right here. Can you see that? Yeah. The target cost me $710. A piece of cardboard. Actually, the dryer that was inside cost me $710. So I figured I'm going to get something out of this joker. So uh, anyway, I got you a, a front leg drone right here. This could be a deer or a hog, either one. What I look for... When when uh, when I start to shoot a deer, unless I'm real high in the tree and I've got to come down like this, but uh, if I'm say 
12, 15 feet or either off the ground, there'll be some white hairs right here. And I look at the top of those white hairs. That's what I aim for. And if I hit there, I'm gonna shoot him through the heart. If he squats a little bit, like he's probably gonna do, I'm gonna hit him up in here somewhere. That's, that's where you want it. Right in here is a perfect shot, right in here. But I always shoot for a deer's heart. On a pig, especially, you know, a lot of pigs are black. And uh, on a pig, it's hard to pick a spot on that joker. He's just a black, shiny pig. You'll have red ones and spotted ones, but most of the time they'll be black. And that's another thing I do. I, when I look at a pig, the first thing I do, here we go, is I look at this 90 degree angle right here. I look at that point and then come straight up it. A, a deer's heart is kind of back in here. A pig's heart is more behind his leg. And so I'll look at that point and come up a little bit, shoot him, try to shoot him right in here. And uh, and you can it gives you a little bit of leeway if he's turned just a little one way or another, or if he turns when you shoot one way or another, that still gets you in good shape. The best shot would be right here at this angle, about like that, for a pig. So anyway, that 90 degree point right there, that's where my eye goes on both deer and hogs. And then I come up and look for them white hairs on the deer right here, and that's what I shoot for. It's been working really, really good for me. You shoot a critter right here if you don't get three inches penetration. If it hits the leg on the other side over there, it's going to be a profuse blood trail. That air, that leg's going to be moving, wiggling the air, causing that hole just blood pour out. And so that, uh, I've killed uh, several deer, one big eight point that I had four inches. Of, the air was, a, it was about this much went in with the broadhead. And what it did, it hit and centered the leg bone on the other side. And it's kind of hard to shoot through a leg bone with 45, 48 pounds. But anyway, the air came back out and was laying on the ground and I was scared to death. I said, man, I didn't do nothing. I went, the deer ran 70 yards shot right through the heart. Right in here is where you want. That leg bone, it'll go up kind of this way and then the shoulder comes back. So you got a pocket in here where there's really nothing at. And a good shot is going through and hitting that shoulder on the other side or the leg on the other side. So that's my tip for where you shoot at, critters at. Hey, I thought I'd share another thing with you too. I have a, I got a chair here. Actually, my buddy Dendy again, he, uh, Dendy Cromer, he turned me on to these chairs. And it's not a chair that you want to tote everywhere. But it's not heavy. You can fold it up and carry it. But you can buy four of them for $100. And what my plans are, if I have a couple of permanent blinds here on private land and some funnels, I have places I hunt like that that I usually have a lock on hanging there. Due to my leg injury right now, I'm not sure how I'm going to fare with lock ons. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to climb a tree because that is an advantage. But I'm also planning for hunting on the ground a lot too. So anyway, you can buy these chairs cheap. You paint them up a little bit and uh, you know, you can leave, leave it in your permanent set up if you want to if some of you guys maybe hunt out of pop-up blinds or whatever I don't but I hunt I hunt out of man-made blinds and nothing against the pop-up blind I just I ain't gonna spend that kind of money on one but um, also like if you took it in the swamp way back there somewhere you'd you carry it in the swamp have you a rope on it it's not hard to pack and just leave it I mean it, you ain't got a lot of money in it and uh, if you got a spot you want to hunt, you leave it there. You know, you're sitting on a feed tree. You can fold it up and stick it under the palmettos or something and come back and get it later. It won't rot. It'll be there. You know, you can hunt it in that whole end of the swamp all year and then bring it out when you're done. And here's what this chair is. Just your little old cheap fold-up chair. And, uh... I think I bought that from uh, Walmart. And if I'm not mistaken, it costs $16. Of course, in uh, Joe Biden's world, it may be 30 now, who knows. And uh, it, it'll sink in the ground, you have to set it just right, or you could get you some tennis balls, poke holes in them, in the thing there, you know, but they will be in really soft mud, it's gonna sink a little bit. But you, I mean, you know, you can work around, work around that. So anyway, that's a tip for a pretty cheap chair to use, and it's really comfortable. All right, there you have it. There's a chair. Let's uh, we'll shoot a few arrows.
All right, we got our old doe over there. I think we'll name her Maytag. <laughs> Since she came out of the washing machine, uh, dryer box. But anyway, I got her over there. She's 13 steps. And I'm going to, uh, heck, I'm going to shoot the air. I've got my 45 long coat blunt right here. It'll put a big hole in there. It'll look like you shot her with an elephant gun. If we hit her. But we're going to try to shoot her a couple, three inches above that, uh, that 90 degree angle at the leg there and see how we do. And this is a, actually the size of that thing is about like a pig I like to kill, probably 50, 60 pound pigs or smaller. But we're going to pretend like she's an old doe on this trip. This is my story. I get to do what I want to. So we're sitting in our blind here. And if you'll notice, I, I'll, uh, I'm going to shoot this shot and then I'll, I'll tell you why I do it like I'm doing. Okay, y'all ready? I have to fix my hat right here. I can't use no distractions. My string hits it, I go all to pieces. Alrighty, let's see how we did. There wasn't no holes in there. We just put the first one in there. We got to find her here first. There we go. My camera's giving me problems here this morning. Maybe another cup of coffee will help it. How about that hole right there where we shot her? All right. That's where I shoot one at. That's where I look to shoot a doe. In reality, I'd have probably hit her two or three inches above that because she would have squatted. The pig, he'd have been in bad shape right there. <laughs> He would have more than likely, and I'm not making this up, he would have more than likely whirled a little bit at the shot going away from me. He heard me over here, he's going to go that way. And I'd have hit him about the same place, but it would have quartered forward more than going straight through, which would have been excellent. But had I had he stood stone still, I'd have killed him. So uh, a couple of things you may have noticed there. I drew my bow kind of slow. I was, I don't even know if you could see me on camera at the time shooting, but... I drew my bow slow because that's a hunting situation. You'll get out in your yard, you throw up air after air. You get in that routine, but what you gonna do when you're shooting at that deer there and there's another one over here looking at you? You can't do all that movement. You got to, got to, you got to play act in your practice. You have to pretend there's does looking at you that everything happens. And you know you can draw and shoot fast in a rhythm because you do that every day in your yard. These shots like this, out of this chair, my bow way, way canted over. I'm drawing slow, and you can actually kind of, especially if you have a quiver, you can actually hide behind your bow and, and hide your draw behind your bow. And I have, I don't know if you can see them, there's trees, I got trees there, I'm shooting through gaps, and there's trees to the left. And I, I try to put myself, when I'm practicing, in a real life hunting situation, so it trains me for that. And, uh, pick a spot. I try to bear down, pick my spot. I hit exactly. I mean, I don't think I missed a half an inch or a quarter of an inch. I hit exactly where I was looking. And, and you have to put yourself in those situations, those practice situations. So in real life, you've already practiced that deal. You know you can make it. The way I shoot instinctive, I know, no doubt in my mind, at 20, 20 yards less, if I hit solid anchor, and I'm looking, I'm, my focus is shot way down there, tied on the spot. I'm going to hit it, or hit right here pretty close to it. Deer killing close. And how do you know that is from confidence. And how you get confidence is from practice. So there's your tip on shooting animals right there, where I like to shoot at them at. A little bit on shoot like you're going to hunt. And before season comes in, naturally, I'll throw my ghillie suit on. I'll have a long sleeve shirt on if I don't have my ghillie. I, have, I wear an arm guard because I lean over a lot and at my shot and if I got any sag in my clothes, it'll get in my string. And uh, face mask, gloves, all that. I want everything to be, the only difference is that deer's Maytag as opposed to being a real one. That would be the only change. And uh, so there you, there you have it on practicing. One other thing is uh, you say, oh, well, you hit him just right, but it was 13 yards. Blam. 
you just won the prize. That's the key to finding animals, animals you shoot is shoot close. This is not a make-believe, oh, I'm going to stage this up and be real close. This is a real-life deal for me. And I'll practice at longer ranges, but I, I wouldn't shoot at that deer at 20 yards. I just wouldn't because it's not high percentage. I hunt high percentage places, meaning for seeing deer, I hunt feed, feed trees, high percentage. I won't climb or sit in a chair unless I'm confident in killing one, and I shoot high percentage shots. And it took a lot of bad lessons for me to learn that. But now, I'm telling you right now, the shoot only shots you know you can make. No, no ifies. Shoot what you know. Don't ever let the size of the deer, or if that's the only deer you've seen in two months, don't ever let that come into play, because that'll just add to the sickness in your stomach if you lose him. Come back and hunt him tomorrow. Having a deer that close is, is worth the trip anyway, whether you shoot him or not. You got, you'll remember that forever. I've had deer so close I could see the dimples in their nose. I don't mean the nose holes, I mean like the little dimples in their nose and didn't get a shot at them. I've had a, a turkey gobbler one time as far as from here to that tree right there. But it came on the wrong side, I couldn't draw my bow. When he, when he looked and actually saw that I was somebody, I think he almost had a heart attack. His eyes bugged out. I could feel wind off his wings beating. And that, man, that's so exciting. That's why I hunt with these bows like this, close range shots. If you want to shoot them farther, hunt a, hunt a weapon, hunt with a weapon that, that has accuracy at farther ranges. Because regular, I've been to 3D shoots and I can tell you now, most of us got no business shooting at deer past 20 yards. And I, I hear all these stories, I killed one at 30 yards, but you ain't telling about the ones you lost. So uh, keep your shots close. 12, 13 yards, I try to set up I always try to set up for a, the longer shot of my setup to be 15. And I may shoot him close out of a tree. I've, that's easy right there. You won't get it. He's not going to catch you. You'll be able to draw. Everything will be smooth. But on the ground, in my limited experience, and I usually kill a deer a year on the ground, is uh, it's, it's tough to get drawn on one like that. But it, anyway, it's, it's fun. It's super fun, but it can be done. It can be done. But... Uh, there you go, close range, keep your shots close, keep them close. And it takes some discipline to do that. And then if you're gonna play this game right here, you gotta have some discipline. You gotta have some discipline. There's no doubt in my mind with my Osage bow and River King arrow, my stone point, shooting that deer or hog right there where I just shot him, we'd be doing a video on uh, skinning and eating <laughs> after that. So anyway, there's your shooting and uh, Picking your spot tips, looking at your animal, where to shoot them at, the way I do. I'm not always right, but I, I, can, I can assure you it's worked on hundreds of animals, deer and hogs. And it works for me, and uh, give it a try. Especially the part on the deer about looking at those white hairs. It gives you a spot to look at. Now granted, if you're in a tree, you've got to come up higher than that, if you're up high in a tree. But if, if the deer's 10 or 12 yards and you're not really, really high, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. And, uh, that's one of the reasons a lot of people miss, even on the 3D range, is by not picking a spot. You got to you got to be shooting at something to hit it. Aim small, miss small. All right, God bless y'all. Thank y'all for watching. And uh, I got a few more tips coming along the way. My leg is slowly healing up, but I don't expect I'll be doing any hunting in a little while, for a month or so. So I'll be throwing a little tidbits out there like this. I hope you enjoy them and uh, like and share them. If you think somebody may learn from them, that's what I'm after. Y'all have a good one. God bless you. All right. Y'all been a good audience, so I'm going to give you a treat to make you smile. And if you don't smile right here, something's wrong with you. Daisy May, come on. Daisy. Daisy, do you want to go for a ride? Do you want to go for a ride? Let's go. Come on. You wanna go? Let's go for a ride. <laughs> that's a smiley dog that's happy. Thank you, Lord.